you stand with me one more time and get your Bibles and let's go to the book of Lamentations. The book of Lamentations, chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses 22 and 23. Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. I don't know that right now I have any more favorite verses in the Bible than these two verses. I am absolutely, absolutely taken. I have thought about these verses for days and days and days. I can't get them off my mind, out of my spirit. I love the Word of God, all of it, but these two verses are ministering to me, and I want to minister them to you today. Lamentation chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. The Bible said, it is of the Lord's mercies. Everybody said the Lord's mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. That ought to excite somebody in here. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Preacher, I I lost my temper yesterday. His mercies are new every morning. Preacher, I said something I shouldn't have said yesterday. His mercies are new every morning. Preacher, I thought something yesterday I shouldn't be thinking. I I felt something I shouldn't have been feeling. I, I looked at something I shouldn't have looked at. I did something I shouldn't have done. I went somewhere I shouldn't have went, and I got up this morning feeling like a dog. Don't, because his mercies are new every morning. My Lord, that ought to thrill your heart. Then I love those last four words. Oh my, do I love those four words. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Anybody here happy God's been faithful to you? I'm going to preach from those last four words today, but I promise you there's a half a dozen messages in these two short verses. I'm going to preach, great is thy faithfulness. We had Brother Lester Williams' funeral here on Friday. I tried to be diplomatic in how I worded it, but Lester was an ornery old cuss. When I first met him 35 years ago, there's nobody in here would have wanted to know him. Nobody. He was an ornery old fella. His boy's car broke down in Newport News and they lived in Pocosin. And the boy said, Dad, help me go get my car that broke down. His dad said, no, but you can take my car and go get your car. And that boy drove his car all the way to where the broke down car was, 15 miles away in Newport News. Drove his car that was repaired one mile, walked back and got his dad's car, drove it two miles, walked back the one mile and got his car, and took him 12 hours to take his car home. And his dad thought it was funny. Lester was an ornery old cuss. That's being nice. Really, he was just mean as a snake. When I met Lester again, when I become pastor of this church, first met him 35 years ago, but met him again about 10 years ago, come in and sit down on that end seat over there, his wife Joyce, precious lady, sitting beside him, and after church he come up, and do you remember me? I said, oh yeah, I do, and I wasn't saying that like I'm happy about. He got to telling me how he gave his heart to God, and how he loves God, and how he's living for God, and how that God is leading him and directing him, and I thought, my Lord, where'd they put the old Lester at? This ain't the fella I used to know. 
And I watched him live for God. And I watched him walk by faith. I watched him when they told him he had incurable cancer. I watched him declare his faith in God. And then when they told him, you're not going to get better. It's a matter of a month or two and you better get your affairs in order. I watched them, him talk about his faith in the resurrection. His faith in heaven. His faith in getting to see God according to the scripture. I was so moved by the faith of this man that one time was so hateful and so ugly and so nasty. I watched him make things right with his children and with his family that he had treated so badly. There's no, there's no pretty package to put it in. He had treated them so badly, but they were all here for the funeral and all loving their dad and all missing their dad because he was a new man. He was a changed man. I want to tell somebody here something today. You're here by the grace and the mercy of God, and don't you ever forget it. Don't you ever forget it. Every one of us, we're here because His compassions fail not. Clap your hands and shout yes. I didn't know this about Sister Joyce. She's probably watching right now. I didn't know this about this precious lady. But when Lester passed, she said, Brother Cunningham, I've just had a hard life in this area. I said, what's that, Sister Joyce? And she said, this is my third husband that's died of cancer. I will now bury three husbands that's died of cancer. And then she began to talk to me about how faithful God has been to her through three unthinkable, painful times of loss. Some of us get a little toe ache and we start crying, God don't love me. Hello? Somebody looks at us cross-eyed and we're ready to give up on God. Hello? Let me tell you something, folks. The greatest revelation you'll ever get about God is not that He's one God. I'm glad we got that revelation. The greatest revelation you'll ever get about God is not that he has all power in heaven and earth. The greatest revelation that you'll ever get about God is not that he can heal sickness. The greatest revelation that you'll ever get about God is not that he can bless you financially. The greatest revelation you'll ever get about God is that God is faithful. God is faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. God bless you. You may be seated. I've told you this before, but it bears repeating today. That word great in your Bible, a Hebrew word that is defined as beyond the ordinary. Great means beyond the ordinary. I've come to tell you on this beautiful Sunday morning that God's faithfulness cannot be compared to anything else in this life. Great is thy faithfulness beyond the ordinary is thy faithfulness. You cannot compare His faithfulness to the faithfulness of your best friend. You can't compare His faithfulness even to the faithfulness of your family. You certainly can't compare His faithfulness to that of a government or an institution. You can't even compare His faithfulness to the greatest human that had ever lived because His faithfulness is beyond the ordinary. It is so far beyond the ordinary that His faithfulness can only be described as unusually constant. Unusually steadfast. His faithfulness is disproportionately large. His faithfulness is nearly unbelievable. You commit sin. We've all committed sin. The only one in here that don't agree to that is the one that's still sinning by lying. Hello? Either that or the Bible's a lie because the Bible said we've all sinned. 
and come short of the glory of God. Hello? Isn't it amazing that no matter what you've done, no matter where you were, no matter who you was with, no matter what the problem was, no matter, no matter what you did when you come into the house of God and you're sitting there thinking everybody's looking at me, nobody likes me. You're sitting there thinking I probably shouldn't be here. You're sitting there thinking I'm not worthy to even be in this house and you're whooping the fire out of yourself and all of a sudden you get that little tingle up your spine the presence of the Lord and before long a tear starts running down your face and before long without, all, without even hardly thinking about it the hand goes up and you're telling him I love you too Jesus thank you for loving me I got news for you friend that's uncommon that's uncommon that's beyond the ordinary that we serve the kind of God that when we step into his presence he doesn't punish you he doesn't separate you he doesn't walk away from you but great beyond the ordinary is his faithfulness somebody shout yes God is faithful when we're not Hello? Every now and then, the best of us just hang out of church because we're lazy. Every now and then, we don't give God what belongs to Him because we'd rather have a new golf club, Brother Jim. That's me and you. Rather have a new hunting rifle than be faithful to God. Isn't it amazing? And I'm not, I, I, don't you dare read something into what I'm saying today that these things don't matter. Tithing and offering and church attendance and all that. I'm telling you if it's in the word of God, it matters. And one of the things we Americans in 2018 need to figure out is that they're not the 10 suggestions. They're the Ten Commandments. His commandments are for us today. He doesn't suggest we go to church. He said, don't you forsake going to church. He doesn't suggest we pay our tithes and give offerings. He tells us we better bring our tithe and offering into the storehouse. So don't go out of here saying preach or preach those things aren't important. I'm just going to tell you what a great God, what a beyond the ordinary, what an amazingly unusual God we serve that even when we're not faithful, He's faithful. He doesn't stop being faithful because I do. Somebody shout thank God. Say thank God. He's faithful when we're not. He's faithful when we're struggling. Preacher, I'm having a hard time doing this. I know it's what God wants me to do, but I'm having a hard time doing it. And I'm afraid God's going to give up on you. Have you ever read the book? The book said nothing can separate me from the love of God. Oh, you don't believe the book, do you? Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Is there anybody in here that believes the book? Nothing can separate me from the love of God. When we struggle, He's faithful. Even when we fail Him, He's faithful. God's faithfulness doesn't depend on who we are. God's faithfulness doesn't depend on who we're related to. About two or three weeks ago, they told me up in the Sunday school that one of the adults said something to Amaris. And Amaris looked at him and said, you do know my papa's the pastor of this church, right? I told her in my office, I said, Amaris, I want you to stay with me on Sunday. And she said, let me go ask mom. She turned around, went over and asked her mom, can I stay with Papa today? He needs me to stay with him. <laughs> and Elisa gave her that answer that Amaris hates, we'll see. And Amaris put her little old hands on her hips and looked up at her mom and said, mom, 
He's our pastor. I got news for you. Don't have, I don't have to be your papa for you to matter to God. It don't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It don't matter what your abilities are. It don't matter what your name is. It doesn't matter how short or how long you've been here. It don't matter anything about what we consider important as human beings. The bottom line is God is faithful. And He's going to be faithful to you no matter what. God's faithfulness doesn't depend on what we've accomplished. It's amazing to me how many people go to prayer. God, you know what I did for you. That's just the wrong way to start praying, folks. That's just the wrong way to approach him. I even have people tell me all the time, I promise God that if he'll do this for me, I'll pay my tithes. If he'll do this, I'll go to church. If he do this, I'll, so, I'll win souls. If he'll do this, I'll pray. And he's up there saying, you're supposed to be doing all that anyway. You don't got to make a deal with him to get him to be faithful to you. You don't have to think you can some way uh, uh, manipulate him into doing something for you. You might be able to manipulate people, but you're not going to ever manipulate God. And guess what? God's going to be faithful to you no matter who you are, no matter what your abilities are, no matter what you've done, what you've accomplished, what your talent is. It just doesn't affect God's faithfulness. God is going to be faithful to you because God is faithful. Somebody said amen. I want somebody in here to know that when we mess up, God is still faithful. When things aren't going very good, God is still faithful. In times of sickness and in times of death, God is still faithful. In times of pain and in times of suffering, God is faithful. In times of want and in times of loss, God is faithful. When all hope is gone, God is faithful. When it seems like all is lost, God is still going to be faithful. When we feel like we're all alone, that nobody cares, that nobody sees, that nobody understands, God is faithful. When people fail us, God is faithful. When people forsake us, God is faithful. When everything that can go wrong, goes wrong, God is still faithful. I know I already mentioned it, but let me say it again because I want to drive the point home today. We are only here today because of God's grace and mercy that fails not. I said because of God's grace and mercy that fails not. No one is here otherwise than by His grace and mercy. The person on your right, the person on your left, the person in front of you, the person behind you, irregardless of how they worshiped, irregardless of how they pray, irregardless of how they look, irregardless of what they gave today, we're all here because of the grace and the mercy of God. It's a grace you're never going to earn. It's a mercy that you'll never, ever, ever, ever be good enough to deserve. Amen? We're not here because we were born into this church. Some may think that's the reason 
you're in the church. No, you're here because of his grace and his mercy. You're not here because you sought out a good church, because you found us on the internet or some advertisement. You're not here because you're a good person. You're not here because somebody invited you. We are all here because of the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. Great is thy faithfulness. The writer of Lamentations penned the words, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Sister Maria Rongo talked about me singing in church years ago. When you start a home mission church, a preacher's got to sing whether he wants to or not. But one of the songs I used to sing was, I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on the cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's Son, took my place. Can I tell you today that we are in this place because of His mercies and it's mercies that keeps us from being consumed by the sin and the wrong and the mess that we all made of, out of our lives before we came to Him. It's because of His mercies that we are not consumed. You need to think about that a little bit. You need to let that marinate in your brain just for a moment. It's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And then the Bible said His compassions. Say compassions. Say it again. Compassions. His compassions fail not. The Hebrew word for compassions is hesed. H-E-S-E-D. Other versions of the Bible don't say compassions. If you look at the English Standard Version or the Common English Version or some of the other versions that people use, that word compassions is used, is replaced with the word loving kindnesses. Another version has put the phrase faithful love. It's because of His faithful love. Somebody hear me here today. Another version said it's because of His steadfast love. Another version said it's because of His unfailing love. Does anybody hear me today? What I'm trying to tell you? His compassions. His unfailing love. His steadfast love. His loving kindness fails not. It don't ever fail. He he don't ever give up on us. He don't ever walk away from us. He don't ever throw us away. Maybe somebody in your life threw you away. But I'm telling you, great is His faithfulness. His loving kindness is steadfast. His loving kindness fails not. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. David said... Oh, David, what a character. We like to think of him as a shepherd boy, and that's the best way to think of him. We like to think of him as the young king, the warrior. Saul killed his thousands. David killed his tens of thousands. We got all these positive stories and all these beautiful psalms and songs that he wrote. But the truth is, the book of Psalms is divided into three 50-chapter divisions. And the end of the first 50 chapters ends with David committing sin with another man's wife. And then in order to cover that sin, when it was found out she was pregnant, the Bible said that he took her husband and put him on the front line where he knew he would be killed in battle. So not only was he guilty of adultery, he was guilty of murder. And yet in the 51st Psalm, the starting of the second division of his life, David begins to write to us about the mercy and the goodness and the grace and the kindness of Almighty God. He talks to us about as far as the east is from the west that's how far he hath removed my transgression from me <laughs> David said I was young and now I am old and I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread I was a young man now I'm an old man and in all of my life, 
I've never seen him forsake the righteous or his seed leave them begging for bread. God takes care of his own. God is faithful to his people. God always makes a way where there seems to be no way. Let's do a little survey here. How many of you have ever gone through a horrible problem? Wave your hand at me. Wave your hand. Anybody besides you not waving their hand, look at them and say, liar. Hello? We've all gone through horrible problems. Now let me take another little survey. Have you ever gone one, through one problem that was so horrible that you came to the conclusion in your mind, I will not survive this one. This is it. Look at all the, almost the same number. What happened? Why are you here? Why didn't that sickness kill you? Why didn't you end up in prison? Why didn't your marriage fall apart? Why didn't that child? I'm going to tell somebody today, God is faithful. God is faithful. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. We say it all the time. I say it nearly every day of my life. There's very few days a year I don't say, God is good. I am blessed. He shall supply all my need. Would somebody shout that with me? God is good. I am blessed. He shall supply all my need. Somebody shout it again. God is good. I am blessed. He shall supply all my need. The devil been lying to you. The devil been telling you you're on your own. The devil been telling you nobody cares. The devil been telling you God's turned his back on you. But I've come to tell you today, God is faithful. Say it with me one more time. God is good. I am blessed. He shall supply all my need. Clap your hands to him, will you? I don't want you to think that that's simply a motto or an exhortation that we go through. Just a phrase of words that pastor made up for us to say every now and then. It's just something good for us to memorize and quote every now and then. Oh no honey. Every time you say God is good. Every time you say I am blessed. Every time you say he shall provide all my need. It is a declaration of your faith in God. It is a proclamation of God's faithfulness. Does anybody hear me on this Sunday morning it's a proclamation of the faithfulness of God God is good I am blessed he shall supply all my need elbow somebody beside you and tell them God is faithful Whew. you see my friend when we declare his faithfulness is great when we declare that his faithfulness is great, we're saying it's beyond the ordinary. We're saying that it never fails. His faithfulness, that is. When we were children, those who were privileged to grow up in the church, I don't know if they still do it, but when I was a child, in Sunday school, we used to sing a little song that said, Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I'm living on His love divine. Every promise in the book is mine. We learned that in Sunday school. Fifty years ago, we learned that in Sunday school. I want you to know that that, ver that little old song is not just some little pretty song we teach kids that's easy for them to learn and sing. It is the truth of the Word of God. It's the truth about the nature of God. It's the truth about the power of the Word of God. Every promise in the book is mine. Somebody shout yes. 
The book said he will never leave us nor forsake us. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Great is thy faithfulness. The Bible said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Great is thy faithfulness. The Bible said no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Oh, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through right now. You don't know what's happening on my job. You don't know what's happening in my bank account. You don't know what the lawyer just told me. You don't know what the doctor just said. I may not know any of that, but I do know this. The book said no weapon. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Say amen, somebody. Say God is faithful. The book said if God be for us, who can be against us? You know my version of that verse. If God's for me, it don't matter who's against me. The book said he's a strong tower and the righteous runneth therein and are safe. Somebody shout, great is thy faithfulness. The book said he is our powerful right arm. Shout, great is thy faithfulness. The book said he is our shield and our buckler. Say, great is thy faithfulness. He is our hope when all hope is gone. Say, great is thy faithfulness. The Bible said he's a present help in the time of trouble. Shout, great is thy faithfulness. The Bible said God is the source of our strength. Say, great is thy faithfulness. The Bible said God cannot lie. The God who cannot lie shout great is thy faithfulness. That book said all of his promises are yea and amen. Shout great is thy faithfulness. That book said God cannot fail. Shout great is thy faithfulness. That book said, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Shout, great is thy faithfulness. That book said, had it not been for the Lord who was on my side. Honey, he was on your side when you didn't even know he existed. He was on your side when you were looking the other direction. He was on your side when you were going the wrong way. He was on your side when you were making wrong decisions. He was on your side when you messed your life up royally. He was on your side when you were at the bottom of the heat, looking up to see the bottom. In fact, I've got to tell you something today. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, oh, shout at me, great is thy faithfulness. Great! is thy faithfulness. A new convert ought not be the only one running in here. Ought not be the only one dancing in here. Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side. Yes, 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 yes. I got more I want to preach, but God wants to help somebody right now. I want you to step out of your seat if you need a miracle. If you're feeling all alone, if you feel like nobody cares, if you feel like all hope is gone, come on down here. He's a great God. He's a faithful God. Come down here and worship Him. Come down here and put your hands in the air. And from the bottom of your heart with every ounce of your being, worship Him. Great is thy faithfulness. 
Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. No matter what you're going through, great is thy faithfulness. No matter who's come against you, great is thy faithfulness. No matter what the enemy's unleashed in your life, great is thy faithfulness. No matter how ugly somebody's been, great is thy faithfulness. No matter what anybody's done or said to you, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Bible said, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Why don't you lift both your hands to heaven, open up your mouth, and from your innermost being, let the Spirit of the living God pray through you. Let the Spirit of the living God pray through you. Come on, faith is going to come into you. Faith is going to infuse your spirit as you build up your faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Yeah.